How do you respond when you hear people say that the Giro d'Italia isn't as tough as the Tour de France? Modern day cycling is now totally different from the days of Eddie Merckx, Fausto Coppi, even Greg LeMond. It's changed completely now because they used to ride training races in January. Races that were won by guys in the first few days of being professional. That never happens anymore. Why? Because they're chasing now world ranking points. Points to qualify the teams for races like the Giro d'Italia or the Tour de France. Then once you make a race like the Giro, people say yes, but it's not as good as the Tour de France. Well, that's absolute rubbish. These races are so hard. And the bike riders just cringe when they hear it. Pressure-wise, there might be a slight difference. But as a competitive event, it's every bit as hard. The Dolomites are as hard or harder than Alpe d'Huez and the Alps. The climbs tend to be much steeper than the French mountains. Uh, take the Zoncolon. It's, it's, I doubt whether they could even find a road that steep in France for them to run a race over. Uh, it's a tough world and it's a tough bike race and the guy that wins it is very much deserving of the accolade. Swooping away with a lovely lead of more than eight minutes over the second ride. You can't Simone lose is coming minutes. in with an outstanding ride for this man. It's really going to be his tour if he keeps up Simone this sort of is football. inside the final 10 kilometers and rides very Simone comfortably. flies through the streets. As every meter goes by, the crowd's roar is getting louder and louder. An uneasy calm finds its way to southern Italy the day before Italian cycling's biggest rendezvous of the year. The second largest bicycle race in the world, the Giro d'Italia, is set to commence with a redemptive former champion seeking to regain his crown. Years of dedication all boil down to this one race. Sicuramente non sarà una non sarà un giro facile. Gli avversari ci sono Garzelli, Casagrande, Popovic. Pantani, Tonkov, molti corridori di questi hanno, hanno delle, delle rivincite col destino. To say that the men of Team Seiko will begin the greatest challenge they have ever faced as a team does nothing to eliminate the weight each man carries with him to the start tomorrow. Every man will be called upon to establish his defining moment. What each man will wonder tonight is will that be enough? No one more perhaps than the slightly built rider that will take command of these men in battle. Gilberto Simoni. Simone still calls the town of Paolo di Giova, where he was born, home. His sister owns a restaurant across the street from the apartment above a small market where Simone spent the first 18 years of his life. With a population pushing only 500, there's not a home without a nod to Simone hanging across its doorstep. Simone lives a very modest, simple life with his wife Ariana and three-month-old daughter Sofia. I've built my first bicycle da ragazzino quando avevo sette anni, quando con, con due biciclette eh, ne, ho, ne ho fatta una e penso che da lì è nata la mia passione per la bicicletta. Però a 14 anni ho iniziato a correre in bicicletta, eh, penso perché Moser ha vinto il Giro d'Italia l'anno prima e io con, quel, con, quella, con quello stimolo lì ho cominciato a correre in bicicletta. E da lì la squadra del paese, la US Monte Corona, mi ha, portato, mi ha portato a fare le categorie giovanili. Poi dopo tre anni ho vinto la mia prima corsa in salita, partendo da Marostica e arrivando all'Alto Piano di Asiago, una gara in salita. Da lì un po' credo di aver scoperto che, che ero uno scalatore. Poi continuando, andando avanti, ho vinto diverse corse e a 19 anni ho avuto la, la svolta perché ho... Ho trovato l'autonomia finanziaria, ho trovato una squadra che mi ha preso e ha creduto in me per quattro anni nelle categorie dilettantistiche. Ho corso con loro e, e ho avuto bei successi vincendo il Giro d'Italia dei dilettanti, vincendo il campionato nazionale e moltissime corse, una 
quarantina di corse. Poi il passaggio nel professionismo nel, 90, nel 94. Erano comunque gli anni molto difficili per me perché ero giovane, molto ambizioso, e avevo le spalle dei grandi successi e volevo conquistarne subito dei grandi e forse è stato lì un po' la mia difficoltà nell'ambientarmi nel professionismo. Poi ho incontrato Flavio Miozzo che ancora adesso è il mio direttore sportivo che nel 99 mi ha portato al podio del Giro d'Italia con la tranquillità che avevo bisogno. E da lì poi ho avuto la piena consapevolezza di poter rifare di nuovo la stessa esperienza e poter cercare un giorno di, di vincere il Giro d'Italia. Every year in May the blood of Italian cycling runs pink. For an Italian team, the Giro is the most important event of the season. It's a popular national spectacle of feverish celebration. A festival of speed that travels the roads of Italy for three weeks, drawing immense crowds and the attentions of millions of cycling fans throughout the world. For Team Seiko, the 2003 Giro d'Italia held special significance. Only one year before, their leader and former winner Gilberto Simoni had retired from the race in disgrace after traces of cocaine were found in his system at a routine drug control test. Doping allegations took him out of the Giro and lost Team Seiko its start in that year's Tour de France. All that had come before, the years of dedication and sacrifice sparked by a boy's passion for the bike, which in turn delivered a man to the top of his profession, was now suddenly branded with a question mark. It was discovered that Simone had unwittingly ingested a piece of candy containing the banned substance that was given to him by his aunt. He apologised for the honest mistake. No. Quello che è successo un po' l'anno scorso deriva un po' dal mio fatto che sono, sono abbastanza semplice, perciò nella mia semplicità non sono mai attento a tutto quello che, che, che mi succede e non sono mai proprio così perfetto su quello che faccio, perché credo che in realtà tutto, tutto si è fatto per essere siamo fatti per essere un po' normali, non essere sempre eh, fermi lì e pensare sempre proprio a quello che si fa, al lavoro che si fa. Ho considerato questo uno sbaglio, uno sbaglio che ho fatto io, non uno sbaglio che hanno fatto gli altri, anche se gli altri hanno fatto uno sbaglio a giudicarmi. E questo forse è la cosa più grave, però da un momento che non mi interessa mai quello che, che dicono gli altri, e guardo sempre all'integrità di, di me stesso. Il ciclismo sia un bellissimo sport, ha un bellissimo pubblico, si è seguito molto. Ecco, il rapporto probabilmente con eh, i giornalisti che certe volte magari vanno un po' fuori da quello che è diciamo, l'ottanza anche del, del vero valore del, del ciclismo, perché i corridori sono tanti che corrono. Loro con certa facilità eh, scrivono di questo, di quello, di quell'altro, invece il corridore va costruito, va seguito, va anche costruito dal lato dell'immagine per, per il valore reale che ha. Io credo che un, un rapporto maggiore fra squadre e giornalisti possa far crescere e fare del bene al ciclismo e ovviamente far del bene ai nostri sponsor, a chi, a chi crede in questo sport, perché se no... Asked if victory at the 2003 Giro would bring sweet revenge, Simone replied that vengeance was only secondary. The primary focus was winning. Team Seiko constructed their 2003 Giro squad around Simone solely with that focus in mind. Dario Pieri. He turned pro in 1997 as a very accomplished classics rider with second place in the Tour de Flanders and in Paris-Roubaix. Paolo Fonacciari. At 33, Paolo is the team's old man on the road with the experience to show for it. Andrea Tonti, 27. Second year with Seiko, another of Simone's mountain goats. Fabio Sacchi, 29 years old, professional since 1996, raced with Luc Leblanc and Silvio Martinello on Team Polti. Alessandro Specialetti, 28, one of Simone's escorts in the steep mountain stages. Marius Savaliascus, 25, from Lithuania. He's the only non-Italian on this all-Italian cycling team. Damiano Cunego, second year pro, first Giro. 
He'll be the youngest rider in this year's Giro d'Italia. Leonardo Bertagnoli, 25. Simone's roommate on the road, his best friend and a fellow climber. The first week of this year's Giro is designed for the sprinters. The villages and towns seeing the fastest showman on two wheels careen for the top of the podium. Mario Cipollini, the Lion King, one of the greatest pure sprinters the sport has ever known. He's the reigning world champion on the road and a born natural superstar. He's here to break Alfredo Binder's all-time record of stage wins in the Giro d'Italia. Alessandro Pataki, the new Italian star gunning for Cipollini's crown. Robbie McEwen, the brash cocky sprinter from Queensland, Australia. He finished second to Cipollini in the world title last year. These are the favourites for overall classification. Marco Pantani, former Giro winner and winner of the Tour de France in the same year. A fallen hero tainted with doping scandals but still a national treasure. And he's wildly popular with the Tifosi. Stefano Garzelli, former winner of the Giro, a friendly but enigmatic personality. He'd a lot to prove. Disqualified for drug abuse last year, he's also had a year out of competition. Aitor Gonzalez, last year's winner of the Tour of Spain. Francesco Casagrande, another race favourite. And powerful men like current Italian time trial champion Dario Frigo. As expected, stage one sees Giovanni Lombardi setting up his teammate Mario Cipollini for the win. Cipollini stays in Lombardi's slipstream for as long as possible, until he blasts for the line in an all-out sprint. But Alessandro Pataki, the rising Italian sprinter, beats Cippo to the line. It is an uncharacteristic defeat for the Lion King, who has spent the last decade virtually without rival in the bunch sprint. The next day is McEwen going for broke, but the feisty Australian closes the door on Fabio Baldato and is disqualified by the race referees. Baldato gets the win and Pataki stays in pink. Today's uphill finish surprises the cycling world. Stefano Garzelli, after a year away from the sport, sprints ahead of the peloton to claim his first victory since being suspended for a positive doping control. His confidence is now sky high and that can prove to be the greatest teammate of all. Stage four finds the sprint specialist back in action as Mario Cipollini's teammates try once again to help him close the deal. The Saeco boys drive the pace at the front knowing that the best place to avoid trouble is at the sharp end of the race. But it's Robbie McEwen who crosses the line first, this time without incident to notch himself an official stage win. Pataki celebrates another day as race leader, knowing full well that as soon as the race leaves the flats, the pink jersey will become only a memory for him. Cipollini tries again, going head-to-head -head in a 45 miles per hour drag race with Pataki to the finish. But the younger man bests the Lion King for a second time, and nearly an entire week in the Maglia Rosa. Mario Cipollini stretches towards his last chance to make history, although you wouldn't know it to look at him. The Lion King is ready to hold court on this most important day. History waits in the palm of his hands, or does it? Pataki has belied him at every turn. Will today be the day that the Lion King finally reascends his throne? But Pataki gets the jump off the chipper's wheel and scores yet another win. Five flat stages and Alfredo Binder's record remains. Cipollini will have to wait for another day as the spectacle of the sprinter's stages is over for the moment. Today, the general classification contenders will face their first real test of the race. Stage 7 sees the road head upwards towards the clouds for the first time in this year's Giro. Team Saeco is much larger than just the men on the bikes. There are the directors and managers who formulate the war plan, determine strategy and tactics and oversee the massive logistics involved in transporting the riders and their equipment to a new destination at the end of each day's stage. General manager Claudio Corti has been with Saeco for six years. No stranger to the Giro, Corti himself raced 12 of them as a professional. The Giro d'Italia per, per una squadra italiana eh, rappresenta il, eh, il momento più importante, più importante della stagione. Eh, noi italiani ce l'abbiamo nel sangue. 
con il personale, è un gruppo ormai affiatato e con una mentalità dedicata al risultato dell'insieme e non a, a risultati personali. Ma la nostra squadra è, è quasi una famiglia perché comunque si vive 250 giorni all'anno insieme e l'importante per, per creare il gruppo è saper proporsi con ognuno a seconda del proprio carattere, a seconda della, della propria, del proprio modo di, di vedere il lavoro e, e, e l'ambiente ciclistico. Director Sportif Giuseppe Martinelli has led Marco Pantani to wins at the Giro and the Tour de France, as well as Stefano Garzelli to his Giro win in 2001. Ho fatto dieci anni nel campo professionistico come corridore, ho vinto una decina di corse, sono arrivato secondo alle Olimpiadi a Montreal nel 1976. Eh, ho fatto il diciottesimo anno da, da direttore sportivo. Gli obiettivi di, di quest'anno erano sicuramente quello di migliorare quello che era eh, la squadra rispetto all'anno scorso, che abbiamo avuto una stagione sicuramente un po' altanelante, diciamo un po', un po strana perché abbiamo puntato molto sul Giro d'Italia, poi è andata come è andata. Non siamo andati al tour, abbiamo visto un pochettino dove eventualmente bisognava correggere un po' il tiro e siamo partiti molto bene, eh, con le, non abbiamo sbagliato quasi niente fino, fino al Giro d'Italia, compreso le classiche, abbiamo avuto la fortuna di trovare corridori sempre in condizione al momento giusto come, come Pieri alla Roubaix, come Celestino a alla Milano Sanremo e come altri praticamente a Starloa e così alla Freccia Vallone e Liegi. As the peloton rolls out, the crowd has their final chance to see their heroes in streets of their hometown. Mario Cipollini, amongst the rollout, takes a solo spin and plays to the crowd. Today Saiko has grasped their sword and takes to controlling the race. La struttura del Giro d'Italia era che Gilberto, partendo come un faro, eh, era importante avere una, una, dei gregari veramente gregari, dove potevano eventualmente entrare in, in campo in qualunque momento. Perciò 4-5 uomini per la pianura che ti potessero lottare tranquillo per quello che erano le, le 11 o 12 tappe di pianura e poi invece una, una struttura con Saba, Cunego, Bertagnolli, e Tonti e Spezzaletti dove eh, di essere tranquillo anche per quanto riguarda la salita. Over the radio, Simone presses Martinelli to let him stretch his legs with an attack. Martinelli tells him to relax. It's early in the 21-day race. Gilberto Simoni sicuramente è molto forte di testa. Cioè, quando si impone una cosa, assomiglia eh, per certi versi a, a Marco Pantani. Mario Sabalaiskas gives everything he has, suffering at the front for his leader, knowing full well his destiny is to simply live to fight another day. Simone decides to test his legs and only a few are able to follow. Simone's teammate has done his job dropping back and holding on with those who can't hold his pace. Gozzelli and Simone have arrived at this year's Giro in top form. As the two strong men pass the five kilometers to go banner, they find themselves alone. Gozzelli puts on a poker face, but each time Simone looks away, the strain on Gozzelli's face is obvious for all to see. Andrea Noe suffers but fights back to bridge up to the two leaders. The break, now three riders strong, will surely put time on the chasers. Simone gives it everything he has, knowing he has no chance to take Garzelli in the sprint. Gozzelli finds a little extra power at the end of the stage, taking the sprint for first place on the day. But Simone has made his intentions well known now, and only 31 seconds separate him from first place. Simone is engulfed by the media and is immediately inundated with questions about the day's final climb. He remarks with surprise that he didn't expect there to be so few riders from the start of the climb. Di 
After Simone politely answers a few questions, he's whisked away to begin his recovery for the next day's stage. The riders roll towards the start of the stage from Rietti to Arezzo. Garzelli arrives in the pink jersey. With two stage wins already under his belt, he's proving to be one of the main contenders for overall victory when the race arrives in Milan. For the next two days, Simone and the rest of the contenders for the overall classification will have to be patient and lie in wait until another opportunity comes along to chase the leader's pink jersey. Nella squadra mi fa, eh, faccio tutti i sacrifici che devo fare, che è il mio lavoro, eh, mi impegno al massimo e eh, faccio il lavoro che mi piace. E qui però ho trovato anche un ambiente molto, molto divertente, molto bello. Devo dire che con i compagni di squadra ci siamo subito ambientati. Nel 2003 l'anno un po' spesso della rivisita anche della, della Seco perché eh, primi in classifica di Coppa del Mondo, primi in classifica UCI ha trovato finalmente lo spazio che meritava proprio perché come, come compagni di squadra siamo, abbiamo raggiunto penso il massimo dell'omogeneità. Dell the peloton will be looking at another battery of flat stages and once again the sprinters will have their chance to shine. Inside the final kilometers the finish is shaping up to be yet another battle between Cipollini and his greatest challenge to breaking Binder's record, Alessandro Pataki. Beating this sprinting phenomenon is proving to be a much harder challenge than Cipo or anyone else could have expected. But today belongs to the current world champion and after eight stages he's now tied at Binder's long-standing record. Will Super Mario prove to have what it takes to own it outright? With renewed confidence from the previous day's win, Cipollini avoids a crash in one of the final corners with hopes of continuing his winning ways. Mario holds on, narrowly beating McEwen to take the day's stage in front of his home crowd. The Lion King demonstrates why he's considered to be one of the greatest pure sprinters of all times and breaks the decades-old record many thought would stand forever. Depending on the length, each day's stage starts sometime between 9 and 11 o'clock in the morning and finishes around 5 o'clock. But the action in the peloton is only part of the day's work for the team. The ritual begins at first light, hours before the start of the stage, when the mechanics pull open the doors of their truck and begin to set up shop in the street outside the team's hotel. Allora, io mi occupo prevalentemente di per quanto riguarda ordini, misure di telai e fare in modo che ci sia necessario per poter partire, cioè avere il materiale per iniziare la stagione e tutto tutto necessario per continuarla. E logicamente devo un attimino secondare quelle che sono le esigenze dei corridori, cambiare le misure a volte o Richieste particolari di materiali. The rider's bike, thoroughly cleaned, repaired and tuned the night before, are given a final check before they're loaded into the team bus for the journey to the start line. As the mechanics go about their work, the soigneurs arrive and begin to prepare food for the day stage. Sandwiches are made from packaged turkey, ham or beef with fresh baked bread, muffins and fruit, then wrapped and labelled for each rider before being packed into musette bags to be handed up during the race. Eh, sta tanto a contatto con i ciclisti e diciamo a partire dalla mattina li segue nel, nella colazione, nel preparargli i rifornimenti che dopo dovranno mangiare in corsa, nel preparare le borracce per, per dopo bere in corsa, nel seguirli diciamo anche quasi psicologicamente, cioè nel senso che eh, Stargli vicino in tutti i sensi. In pratica farli sentire solo corridori, cioè nel senso a che non gli manchi niente, stargli proprio vicini quasi come, come, un, come un genitore, insomma, no? per, proprio per favorirgli al massimo, per rendergli proprio. In order to keep the cost of the team down, the staff members must wear multiple hats. In addition to driving the bus, Federico makes sure that all of the riders' helmets are accounted for and puts fresh batteries in those important race radios. 
Meanwhile, inside the hotel, the day begins for the riders around 8 a.m. for a relaxed breakfast of fruit, pasta, thinly sliced meats, cereal, coffee, juice and water. A me essere professionista mi piace molto che mi mantengo in forma. Non c'è bisogno di stare attenti alla dieta. Io per dirti curo molto l'alimentazione perché penso che sia importante. Magari quando vinco una corsa o perlomeno vado bene penso a quello che ho mangiato magari la mattina e penso che sia quello che, che mi abbia aiutato. E contrariamente se il giorno dopo magari non mangio come ho mangiato il giorno prima dico caspita eh, potrebbe essere quello che mi penalizzi. No? Two of the soigneurs join them to act as waiters responding to special needs or requests. The team manager and the directors arrive. Strategy and tactics for the day are discussed but the mood is slow paced and relaxed all to minimize the expenditure of energy on the part of the riders. That will come later, during five to seven hours that they are riding their bikes. The riders return to their rooms after breakfast to watch TV, pack and dress for the race. Quello che mi riguarda, eh, sì, tre settimane di, di corsa sono tante, anche a livello mentale non sei più tanto lucido come i primi giorni e la sera magari, sarò sincero, anch'io in queste ultime notti ho fatto fatica ad aumentarmi, sei un po' per il mal di gambe, un po' la tensione delle, delle tappe del giorno dopo, adesso ci sono due tapponi importanti ed è importante dormire. Back outside at the truck, the mechanics continue their work, prepping equipment for use in stages to come. New frames are unloaded, tires glued, bikes built. The soigneurs rejoin them, porting the team luggage down to the trucks to be loaded and taken to the next hotel, where they'll be waiting for the riders in their rooms after the day's stage. Two of the team cars are loaded with wheels, coolers, bags of food, tools and as many as six team bikes, all topped up ready to be passed along to the riders in case of problems during the stage. Bikes are stacked on the cars according to the importance of the rider. Simone gets a bike on each car in the most accessible position on the rack. These two cars, along with at least one mechanic in each, will follow the stage from start to finish, fighting for position in their own maddening race behind the peloton, acting as support vehicles for the team. Federico, the driver, is as celebrated a man as Simone among his peers. He knows the roads and the routes of the race like he knows himself and the other team drivers often wait for him to pull out first so they can follow him to the finish line or the next day's staging area. This work gives me a great satisfaction and I think I can do it with my heart, besides doing it with fatigue. It's a work that I feel like I feel like it in my heart. It gives me a great satisfaction. È un ambiente che mi piace perché è un ambiente bello, io lo ritengo uno degli sport più belli che possa esistere al mondo. L'unica pecca di questo lavoro è che sacrifichi un po' la famiglia perché stando via 200 giorni l'anno fuori da casa, meno male che ora c'è il telefono riesci a sentirti magari quando vuoi, che se no sarebbe davvero un problema grosso. Stage 10 gets underway. It's a 202km stage from Montecatini Terme to Faenza. Tullio, the team mechanic, helps Fonacciari work out a slight problem with his race radio, which will be a vital tool in the team's race tactics. Two of the Saiko Swaniers will jump ahead to the feed zone to support the team before the riders get to the one and only decisive climb. The peloton rapidly approaches the feed zone. The team is counting on the Swaniers to deliver. Missing a feed could spell disaster to a team contending for the overall victory. Unbeknownst to many race fans, there are only a few times during a race that riders are allowed to take food from the team car. Simone and his team take control of the race and in a one-two punch, Saeco director Martinelli sends Leonardo Bertagnoli up the road on the penultimate climb. Not in an attempt to win the stage, but as part of a tactic to force a selection behind him. Simone is growing more and more restless. He wants to attack and hit his opponents hard. Martinelli radios to Bertignoli and tells him to lift the speed. Only moments later, Simone is given the go-ahead to attack. Simone goes with the intent of forcing a selection. Much to his surprise, no one responds. Cries of suicide and crazy echo throughout the press tents as those watching believe that Martinelli has made a horrible tactical error. 
His stretch of the legs becomes a vicious attack of 40 kilometers to go, literally blowing the race wide open as he leaves Garzelli in his wake. Simone is trying to bridge the gap to his teammate. That way he will stand the best chance of putting time into his rivals, how in the hope of taking the Maglia Rosa away from Stefano Garzelli. Simone catches Bertignoli and the two teammates keep the gas on all the way to the finish as a group of 20 breathe down their necks in hot pursuit. Bertignoli rides his heart out in order to ensure their successful escape and put precious seconds into his captain's pocket. Simone crosses the line and into the pink jersey as overall leader by a margin of just two seconds over Stefano Garzelli. Tappa difesa la mattina praticamente con Gilberto abbiamo detto che volevamo attaccare sull'ultima salita che era il Trebbio. E però per attaccare sul Trebbio bisognava avere il coraggio di rischiare un corridore praticamente per aiutarlo poi dal Trebbio a andare all'arrivo perché c'erano ancora 30, 30 km di qua, quasi pianura. Ora abbiamo detto a Bertagnoli di andare dentro in una fuga qualunque fosse eh, partita all'inizio o a metà e cercare di eh, lavorare tranquillamente senza dare nessun, nessun appiglio per pensare che fosse una strategia. Sono andato in fuga dopo una cinquantina di chilometri e quando do, verso la, a 30 km dal traguardo mi hanno avvisato che stava rientrando Gilberto sul nostro gruppetto. Allora io ho provato a portarmi più avanti possibile in salita, anche per non farmi raggiungere troppo presto, perché in quel caso mi avrebbe staccato. Cioè che lui fosse entrato proprio senza, senza dare il pensiero di, una, di, di, di un programma di, di coso. Poi forse dove abbiamo giocato veramente bene è stato il fatto che quando eh, mi hanno chiesto in televisione perché fosse in fuga Bertagnoli, io sapendo che siamo tutti collegati televisivamente ormai, ho detto che non sapevo perché era in fuga. In quel momento nessuno si è permesso di rispondere al mio scatto anche perché gli sarebbe un po' costato caro e sono partito molto deciso. E mi hanno lasciato andare pensando che comunque 40 km per arrivare all'arrivo fossero tanti. Perciò se lui avesse attaccato e avesse scolinato da solo o in pochi non avrebbero collaborato se, se Garzelli era staccato oppure se Garzelli era insieme. Eh, dal momento che mi ha lasciato 30 secondi ho pensato che adesso è dura venire a prendermi. Mi ha raggiunto a 3 km la Gran Premio della Montagna, ho dovuto tenere duro proprio con i denti perché andava su veramente forte, io ero già stanco dopo 150 km di fuga, sono riuscito a scolinare praticamente attaccato a lui e dopo andare all'arrivo mancavano 25 km di discesa, sali e scendi così, là veramente ho cercato di dare il tutto per tutto, rischia cioè rischiando, rischiando tante volte di, di, di rimanere là in pianura addirittura perché proprio ero, ero, ero stanchissima. Comunque siamo riusciti a guadagnare una trentina di secondi che mi ha permesso di, di prendere la maglia rosa, di fare il primo giorno in maglia rosa. Fare all'arrivo e indossare la maglia rosa per due secondi, prima di tutto è una cosa bellissima, però è stata una cosa divertente anche perché nessuno si aspettava. A huge gamble had paid off, the plan had worked, and Gibo is already in pink, two days ahead of schedule. In addition to preparing the food before each day stays, the soigneurs also have the responsibility of delivering the riders' luggage and setting up their rooms ready for massage. Massage is a crucial part of the riders' recovery process, and without it, they could never race 21 consecutive days. Il massaggiatore ha il compito in questo caso di trovare un, un migliore riposo possibile in quanto riguarda per l'atleta, la, diciamo. E' importante anche diciamo, che il leader va sempre messo in una camera mh, abbastanza silenziosa, mai, dis mai disposta diciamo, sulla strada e sempre vicino eh, al massaggiatore in cui ne lo massaggia. Ecco, queste sono le cose dei massaggiatori. Diciamo, col corridore il massaggiatore ha un rapporto diciamo, abbastanza confidenziale in quanto il massaggiatore, oltre diciamo, che a fare la funzione del massaggio, ha anche la funzione di aiutare il corridore mentalmente nei, peri, nei, nei momenti in cui si trova in difficoltà, cioè aiutandolo moralmente, aiutandolo a fargli capire che il, il, diciamo, ha recuperato bene lo sforzo dopo la corsa che, e tutto ciò diciamo, che riguarda l'ambito de, diciamo, de, del, settore, del settore del ciclismo, di tutto quello che riguarda anche, posso dire, noi pensiamo al massaggio 
quindi lì gli facciamo rilassare, e gli facciamo scaricare sia mentalmente che fisicamente tutte le tossine hanno accumulato durante la corsa, durante l'allenamento e quando, quando abbiamo nelle mani un corridore, insomma, una muscolatura, le gambe del corridore, noi riusciamo a capire in che punto, a che punto sono i suoi muscoli, cioè nel senso se ha, ha fatto uno sforzo eh, diciamo eccessivo, se ha accumulato tossine eccessive, se durante lo sforzo gli è capitato di avere qualche contrattura, se la sua muscolatura è stanca, se invece ha recuperato bene, noi riusciamo a sentire tutte queste cose e in funzione e in base a questa nostra sensazione riusciamo a capire se un corridore è stanco e o no, insomma, se è preparato o non è preparato, se ha fatto veramente uno sforzo grosso oppure ha recuperato in pieno, quindi vuol dire che in quel momento la sua muscolatura è il suo grado di allenamento è perfetto, insomma. Vediamo se un corridore è al top, se un corridore non è al top. Tutte queste sensazioni sono cose che noi si sentano proprio si sentono fisicamente. Last to arrive at the hotel is Simone, still living the moment of the day's triumph. Before the start of stage 11, the spotlight shifts to Team Saeco. Fans gather to greet the riders, autographs are signed and pictures are taken. The entire team knows that by being in the pink jersey, they have the added pressure now that comes with the role of race leader. The managers and staff once again carry on the preparations for the day's stage, all without letting anything but the job at hand be their main focus. I think that when si fa una scelta sia tecnica di tecnici, di massaggiatori, meccanici, di medici e di corridori, soprattutto ci deve essere la, la, lo stimolo per farlo, non ci deve essere la fiducia reciproca, se no si parte, se no si parte con, con quel piede sbagliato. No? Poi questa, questa deve essere diva sul campo e deve essere anche vinta certe volte. Non... Dunque il mio lavoro in questo Giro d'Italia innanzitutto tenere il gruppo unito perché Claudio Corti e Martinelli mi credono tanto come uomo squadra e mi danno la responsabilità in corsa di gestirli un po' i corridori. E riesco a tenerli molto legati tra di loro, mi interessa come stanno, come non stanno, se hanno bisogno di qualcosa, eh, se hanno bisogno di una borraccia li lascio stare lì tranquilli in gruppo, vado io a prendere la macchina, gliela porto io e poi cominciando da domani il mio lavoro sarà dal chilometro zero fino a Milano, lavorare tanto, tanto, tanto per Gilberto. Non è detto che tu, noi... Prendiamo dei corridori, prendiamo del personale che sono stati male su altre squadre, hanno avuto esperienze diverse, dobbiamo dare una direttiva, dobbiamo gestirli come vogliamo noi. Per cui eh, ci vuole del tempo, non, non, non sono, non sono diciamo, obiettivi che, che si raggiungono dalla sera alla mattina, ci vuole del tempo e dopo chi eh, riesce a entrare in, questo, in questa mentalità, in questa filosofia di squadra, magari nel giro di un anno o due anni e si possono aggiungere anche risultati importanti. Today's stage is the flattest day in this year's Giro. Team Saeco's goal will be to keep Simone out of danger and up near the front of the peloton. The team will certainly have their hands full. Another facet of being a professional racer is greeting members of the team's sponsors. Everyone wants the attention of the new race leader. It's not easy, but an important part of the team's sponsorship relationship. On a very wet day, the tension in the peloton goes up as the race moves closer to the finish. Fans eagerly await the arrival of the peloton, while the less than hearty seek shelter in local pubs. Not to worry, because the action is showcased on the big screen TV. On a day like today, which won't have any effect on the overall, the goal is to keep your team leaders safe and out of danger especially on these treacherous roads. The pace is scorching despite the weather conditions and all the top sprinters are jockeying for position. McEwen makes a move to the inside. 
Cipollini slots into perfect position once again and won't have an easy go of it as Pataki and McEwen are both right on his wheel as they head into the final corner. His confidence outweighing his ability in the dangerous conditions, Isaac takes the world champion down to the tarmac. McEwen's last minute move shows that his skills have triumphed his rivals on this day. McEwen slips through without incident and gets to celebrate his second stage win. The morning of stage 12, the team heads to the bus and thoughts of what lies ahead are deeply embedded in the riders' minds. Today is the first of three stages consisting of mountaintop finishes that will be covered over the next week. The Lion King announces his retirement from this year's Giro after yesterday's crash. His injuries proved to be more serious than originally thought. He leaves, however, having achieved his goal. As the team moves towards the start of today's stage, local business people await the arrival of the riders in hopes that they will get a glimpse of the race leader. When you arrive at the moment of acting, you can't talk about your preoccupations, your problems, your thoughts. You have to only think about how you want the race, how you want the race to happen. This year's Giro had been tagged as one of the steepest in recent memory. It would seem that the race organisation had gone out of its way to find the cruelest roads in the country with which to punish the riders. The steep slopes of the Monte Zoncolan, a climb that some had called the toughest vertical jaunt in Italy. This terrible pass stretches over 10 kilometres in length and tilts up at an alarming 22% gradient at its most brutal point. Only the vicious Angrelou of Spain matches its steep incline. The Zoncolon is a climb the likes of which the Tour de France would never see. But this is Italy, where nothing is too difficult for a true champion to conquer. With rumours of rain haunting the stage, the Saeco mechanics prepare special backup bikes with triple chain rings and cassettes running 1329 tooth sprockets. And it's because the riders fear that the tyres of their regular climbing bikes will slip under bigger gearing if the pavement is wet. The rain doesn't come, and most of the men stick with their regular bikes. Saeco takes control of stage 12 from the beginning of the day, allowing a break to go free early in order to take the pressure off themselves as leaders until the final climb. Damiano Kinego in his first year will be put to his biggest test yet. This former junior world champion and the youngest rider in the race is expected to perform better than most and is tipped as the ascender to the climbing throne of Marco Pantani. The road starts to kick up and so does the tempo. Team Saeco knows that the battle is just up the road where the degree of incline can hit up to 23%. Simone attacks on the steepest part of the Zoncolan. Francesco Casagrande collapses and withers on this beast of a climb. While Garzelli, his face a twisted mask of pain, fights to limit his losses. The one bright beam shining through the dark fog and clouds along the road up to the ski station is former Giro and Tour de France winner Marco Pantani. Marco fights hard, bringing to mind the former brilliance of the man who in years past was virtually unbeatable when the road turned upwards. His heart is there, but not the body. Simone keeps his attack going and continues to put time into his rivals. Garzelli and Pantani both agree to work together to try now and pull back their rival. Even with this great effort, Simone isn't getting the time gains that he had hoped for. Mountains this steep can damage or even destroy the best climbers in the world. After 180 kilometers in the saddle, Simone flies across the finish line to a stage victory, extending his lead now to 44 seconds over Garzelli. The rest of the protagonists come in exhausted while the Saeco crew await the arrival of the rest of their team. Cunego is the next rider in for Team Saeco, and this bright young talent looks to be on the tight track to fulfill his enormous potential as a pro. Ho avuto la fortuna di, di passare professionista giovane e di fare il Giro d'Italia in giovane età, 21 anni. Penso che ci siano pochi che hanno avuto questa opportunità. Capita molto, molto spesso in corsa di sentirsi stanchi, di voler mollare perché la fatica che stai facendo te te la, fa, te la stanno facendo gli altri. No? Scattano in salita, te sei lì che, che fatichi moltissimo 
in quei momenti lì hai voglia di mollare ma dici no ho un obiettivo ben importante voglio, voglio arrivare in fondo perché solo così si può diventare corridori se molli vuol dire che sei un corridore che non sei molto determinato ci sono magari dei momenti che se stai male per motivi fisici è un conto ma se molli te così perché non, non ce la fai psicologicamente vuol dire che insomma c'è qualcosa che non va perché diciamo che Gilberto è uno che recupera tanto, poi è un corridore proprio da corsa a tappe. E non, e no, anche oggi non è che sono rimasto soddisfatto che abbia battuto Garzelli per dire, non è che... Io ero sicuro che arrivava con 20-30 secondi di vantaggio su Garzelli. Sì, Gilberto è stato lui che mi ha voluto in squadra. Ci troviamo spesso in allenamento, quando facciamo gli allenamenti più impegnativi. E la cosa principale è che c'è che c'è proprio nella sua persona è la tranquillità perché veramente non lo vedi mai nervoso, mai preoccupato, è sempre molto tranquillo e questo penso che sia anche una dote, c'è cioè una sua dote che lo fa, lo fa recuperare, lo fa avere sempre la mente libera per il giorno dopo, per, per andare sempre forte e qui sto, sto cercando di parlare anch'io insomma anche se non è, non è facile. Cerco di stare vicino, imparare più cose possibile perché da campione così c'è solo da imparare e spero di andare più in là possibile. Today's stage has taken its toll on the field and all the riders will be looking to get down the mountain as quickly as possible to start their recovery. Simone slips into the pink jersey for another day before being swept away to the anti-doping controls. Mi piace pensare che, che continuo ad andare in bici come come lo pensavo i primi giorni quando sono salito in bicicletta e ho chiesto un giorno a mio zio di trovarmi una squadra a percorrere con quei ragazzi, quei giovani. Mi piace pensare che di essere rimasto lì a quel giorno lì con quella voglia di girare il mondo con la mia bicicletta, di poter salire le montagne, arrivare in cima e sentirmi magari grande o soddisfatto per essere lì in cima a queste vette grandi, sentirmi grande come loro. The team doctor makes his rounds, checking in with each rider to make sure all are healthy and ready. Noi seguiamo, in realtà siamo tre medici nell'ambito della società Saeco. Ci dividiamo la presenza nell'ambito delle varie eh, gare che vengono svolte durante l'anno, essendo l'impegno della SAECO molto, nero, molto importante. E molto spesso siamo presenti tutti e tre o perlomeno due contemporaneamente su due gare, due competizioni diverse. Quando siamo al seguito della squadra l'impegno è, è totale, 24 ore su 24. La nostra giornata al seguito delle squadre inizia appunto al mattino, presto, a, passiamo a dare la sveglia ai ragazzi, li prendiamo un approccio iniziale con loro, vediamo se c'è qualche problema da esaminare subito, registriamo i parametri essenziali che possono essere pressione arteriosa, frequenza cardiaca dei ragazzi, li seguiamo poi durante la colazione, impostiamo l'alimentazione che loro seguono, successivamente siamo sempre presenti accanto a loro nell'attesa dell'inizio della gara, nell'eventualità di intervenire su qualche problema che sia insorto o eh, metterli nella condizione migliore per rendere Another day dawns as Team Saeco relishes the success of their team leader. Thus far, the team has performed brilliantly, but there is still quite a lot of work to be done. Most of the team members sit with their roommates, joking and chatting on the sometimes one-hour drive to the starting line. Simone tends to keep to himself. He's usually the last one on and off the bus and likes to plant himself in the back, seeking a little quiet and composure before the violence of the day's competition. Pieri and Ponacciari look over the race route once again to make sure they have chosen the best way to approach the stage and in their way keep Simone safe and protected. As the bus nears the starting area, the riders get into their racing shoes, pull on their gloves, rub ointment on their legs and put on their radios and earpieces that will keep them connected to the team cars and each other during the course of the event. 
The bus parks and the driver and mechanic remove the bikes and line them up outside like arrows in their quivers. There is never too much dialogue about what lies on the road ahead. The riders delay their departure to the start area today because although it's expected of them to interact with sponsors and other VIPs, it can also prove to be a distraction. The riders make the way to the sign-in area. Some of the staff will part ways as they will each tend to their responsibilities. It's 149 kilometers to Marostica and there are 153 riders left after 12 days of the Giro d'Italia. Dario Frigo is on the solo attack and looking for a stage win. The peloton is fairly organized and trying to spoil his efforts. On the last descent, Team Seiko had a bit of bad luck when Alessandro Speciletti goes down hard, trying to avoid another rider. He's OK and able to continue. As Figo's break is pulled back, another attack comes. This time, it's the Dinardi Colpac team which hopes to grab a stage. After a few moments of hesitation, there seems to be some confusion as to who will take up the chase. As the peloton is looking around for someone to take to the front, the Fasa Bortolo boys put their heads down to pull the breakaway back and to try and put Pataki back into a position for yet another stage win. Simone is in good position and riding comfortably within the group. The long break is caught and immediately the Fasa Bortolo train lifts the pace. This will deter any further attacks. The lead-out starts and a rejuvenated Frigo still manages to help Pataki sprint for another win. Pataki goes early and never slows, proving the other sprinters are no match for this great Italian phenomenon. That's win number four for Pataki and Simone is still in pink. The riders work their way to the team bus for a long ride to the hotel. Some of the riders will choose to shower, so they may relax during the ride itself. Once back at the hotel, the riders will follow their typical routines to prepare for the next day. If this were a one-day race, their after-race patterns may vary, but for a three-week tour, deviating from the norm is not a good idea. At dinner, it's important for the riders to replenish what their bodies have lost. Some 8,000 calories are burned on the roads during a single day of racing. A little conversation and a lot of food. Then it's off to bed for a good night's sleep. Tomorrow will come all too soon. The road to Pampiago has special meaning to Simone. The stage today consists of four Category 1 climbs with a mountain top finish. Although he would like to do well in every mountain stage, the final climb on this day passes within one hour of Simone's hometown of Palu. As the crowds work their way up the winding mountain road to secure themselves a prime spot for viewing, Simone fans with their banners line the roads in show of support for their local hero. Some fans will wait upwards of 12 hours to see the Giro come through their region. For Italians, bike racing is a part of their culture and for many, a way of life. The peloton approaches the base of the Alp di Pampiago, an eight and a half kilometer climb with an average gradient of 9%. The ever alert Saiko team is on the front. There are still two riders up the road from what was a five man break. The break had included Lunghi, Lanfranchi, Martinez, Noncentini and Vladimir Belli. All of the GC contenders are present in the peloton. Simone is down to one teammate and he will rely on him solely to set the pace so that the riders competing for the overall victory will be less likely to attack. Gilberto is riding without any more teammates near him now. Simone should ride more defensively. He should be putting the pressure on his opponents to beat him in a one-up contest on today's mountain slopes. Belly, still up the road alone, is trying to give himself a victory in this year's tour. The tempo once again is lifted and the group starts to splinter. Even the best climbers struggle to maintain his wheel. Marco Pantani seems to be riding better as the race progresses. 
Casagrande, Popovic, Rumsas, Gorzelli, Pantani and Perez are all still here. Popovic decides to give it a go, but he doesn't have an effect on the group. Simone attacks and it doesn't look like anyone can answer. Popovic decides to try again and is the only one who can bridge the gap. The two immediately work together as they try to bring back Belly, who's still up the road. The climb continues to point upwards. Simone is riding Popovic off his wheel. Simone is riding like a man possessed now as he closes in on Belly. Simone catches Belly and he keeps right on going. Simone can feel the crowd as they lift him up the mountain. He wants the stage win for his people. Gorzelli is followed by Rumzas and Popovic who try to limit their losses. Gorzelli digs deep as Perez fights his way back up to the front of the group of chasers. The gap is only about 35 seconds to Gorzelli, so Simone can't afford to let up. Simone stays focused and he can see the finish. He manages to keep his rhythm and he crosses the line for the victory. Simone has once again put more time into Gartzelli and there will be more chances for Gilberto in the mountain stages to follow. Simone has delivered a very satisfying win to the people of his region. As the riders roll into the finish area, the Simone hooligans, Gilberto's fan club, celebrate victory in the streets of Pampiago. The discoloured faces of what's left of the shattered field really tells the story. The steep Italian mountains once again take their toll on the peloton. Team Saeco is executing their strategy perfectly, but they also know that the time trial that will come tomorrow will be a pivotal day for Simone. Simone knows that his main GC rival, Stefano Garzelli, is a better time trialist, and he will need to put in a great ride to forfeit as little time as possible to him. La squadra è la cosa è una cosa importante, però è una cosa importante che devi valorizzare te stesso, devi sapere cosa cosa pretendere, cosa chiedere ai tuoi compagni di squadra. E non servono le parole, non, almeno credo che non bastino le parole per, per dar fiducia a una squadra. Una squadra, i tuoi compagni di squadra capiscono di più nell'atteggiamento che hai in corsa, le vere intenzioni che hai, è più facile che ti seguano per quello che vuoi, soprattutto se, se capiscono che, che quello che può essere l'obiettivo finale è raggiungibile. E ti ripeto, non, non servono le parole, conta più l'atteggiamento che hai nei confronti, di, nei confronti della corsa, che sia di pianura, l'attenzione, il voler stare davanti al gruppo, in salita essere protagonisti dei bravi compagni di squadra lo devono capire senza chiedere. Stage 15 is the first of two individual time trials. As final preparations are being done, Simone arrived to do some personal course reconnaissance. Together with Martinelli, they will drive the route to get a better idea of the true complexities of the course and how Gilberto will overcome them. Dario Pieri will be the first to depart for Team Saico, as he's the lowest placed rider on the general classification of the team. He will not contest for victory on the stage and will want to conserve his energy for the more difficult days ahead. Paolo Fonacciari will be the next man out on the road and he too will keep from putting forth too much effort, just enough to avoid the time cut. Fabio Sacchi is off next, and although not usually the most outgoing before the stage start, he shows he is still willing to stop and interact with his fans. Having eh, visto Gilberto come sta pe come pedala adesso e ogni giorno che passa va sempre più forte, io sono convinto che gli dà un gran filo da torcere all'EMS. Deve, deve cominciare ad aver paura di un corridore che si chiama Gilberto Simoni. Allora, il ciclismo beh, è uno sport che sicuramente ti insegna tante cose, ti insegna cosa vuol dire la fatica, ti insegna a lavorare, ti insegna a stare a contatto con tanta gente, 
tutte parti d'Italia, diciamo, quando sei giovane o del mondo quando diventi più grande. Damiano Cunego is looking quite serious, this being his first three week stage race. He's looking to test himself and see how his body responds after nearly two weeks in the saddle. Vado bene in montagna perché avendo un ottimo recupero vado nelle corse a tappe. La mia nota dolente diciamo, è la cronometro, non riesco a tenere il passo de degli altri in pianura. Uno perché magari sono ancora il più giovane, due non riesco a tirare i rapportoni che spingono magari i passistoni. No? Comunque mi sto accorgendo che dall'anno scorso a quest'anno ho migliorato moltissimo, comincio a tirare quel famoso dente in più, comincio a tenere le velocità un po' più alte in pianura e questo mi dà, mi dà fiducia. Bettignoli arrives for his warm up. Ma sento più che altro una grande responsabilità adesso che ha preso la maglia, bisogna, lui ha fatto il suo dovere e noi dobbiamo adesso riuscire a fare il nostro meglio possibile per portarlo fino a Milano. C'è cioè la cosa principale appunto è non sbagliare niente, essere sempre vicino a lui il più possibile. E questa è più che altro una cosa di responsabilità. Dopo sinceramente non è che mi sento particolarmente stanco o, o cosa, cioè più che altro è una cosa di di responsabilità e di un po' di tensione, insomma, cioè, so che non bisogna sbagliare. Pieri finisce il suo ride e sarà grato che questo short day on the road is over. A calm race leader returns from his look at the course. Behind his composed exterior, however, is a man that knows if he doesn't do well today, he could lose the Giro d'Italia. His personal soigneur and the team's doctor come to check on his recovery after yesterday's difficult finish. Dario awaits Simone's arrival at the finish. Big Omar helps him with the post-race rinsing. Fellow teammate Igor Astaloa and winner of this year's Flesh Wallon stops by to lend some support to his team before heading off to the United States and the US Pro Championships. Cunego is out on the course and is really putting in a great effort. At only 21 years of age, he is definitely showing that he will be a star of the future. Final adjustments are being made to Simone's bike to ensure that he doesn't have any technical problems. Onlookers start to gather to catch a glimpse of the race leader as he now prepares for one of the biggest battles of his career. A battle not only against his rivals, but against time itself. Marco Pantani chooses to warm up on the road as he will also try to get some time back. Dario Frigo is out on the course and putting in some fast times at the checks. Simone will have his work cut out for him today with an invigorated Garzelli looking to claw back his losses of the past few days. Martinelli has some last-minute thoughts on the areas that he thinks could cause Simone some problems. They leave nothing to chance. Sicuramente una tappa a cronometro è sempre, è sempre decisiva, è sempre importante per, per una corsa a tappe. Per me, che, che è un po' il mio talone d'Achille, è sempre una preoccupazione in più. Posso contare che questo cronometro che, che arriva a Bozzano viene dopo due giorni di tappe in montagna, perciò credo che, che uno scalatore, uno ragazzo di fondo come, come sono io, potrebbe alla fine trovare anche del, del giovamento e su questo pongo la mia fiducia. Gozzelli is off and the moment of truth has arrived. Gilberto knows that the time has come for him to hold nothing back. With a look of utter determination, he counts the final seconds out in his head. He's off, and now the pink jersey is out on course. Not one of the great time trials of the sport, Simone has had to rely on his success on the mountain slopes to win big races. Today, though, it is another matter. Simone is thundering around the course and taking huge risks to keep himself at the top of the overall. Dario Frigo has a good ride, but will only get 17 seconds back for Simone. He will have only the two mountain stages still remaining to try and get himself into contention. Marco Pantani fights to try and keep himself in the top 10 in the overall classification. Simone comes through the second time check and he's losing time. Popovic is having a fantastic ride and climbing up the overall classification. Pantani now is having a surprisingly good ride and showing that he's not giving up. Popovic is riding with the best and he's showing he's truly a star of the future. 
Gotzelli starts to show the strength of his efforts here. After a dynamic start to today's stage, he has slowed considerably. The number two rider is laboring, and in the time trial, there's no place to hide. At the third time check, Simone is starting to put time into Gartzelli. Popovich is shining and his talents are bringing him closer to challenging for a podium position in Milan. The prodigy of Ernesto Colmargo is riding himself into his finest form as a pro. Just like on a mounting slope, the two top GC contenders are really battling it out. Simone is riding like a man on a mission and he's putting in the time trial of his life. Garzelli has had a good ride today, but he needed a great one. It doesn't look like he'll beat Simone, and I don't think anyone at the start of the day stage could have expected this. Simone is the last man on the course, and if he hangs on, he will have put time into Garzelli. The pink jersey is unrelenting and hammers his advantage to the very end. Simone crosses the line, seventh place, 39 seconds better than Garzelli. Aitor Gonzalez will take the win and Garzelli will have to settle for 13th. The media swarms the race leader. Simone's quest is in full swing and after a tense day, Simone and his team can let out a collective sigh of relief while putting another day behind them. Simone climbs up onto the podium. The public's adulation and his personal satisfaction are ever increasing as he pulls on yet another pink jersey. Martinelli and Corti think ahead to tomorrow, where the team's main objective will be to protect the leader on what is a very flat day before a very much needed rest day. The start of stage 16 sees a sense of calm in the riders and the staff. After yesterday's stunning performance by Simone, the team is able to relax, even if only for a few moments before the start of the stage. The directors are temperate, but can't afford to let the riders' motivations slip. A seemingly calm Simone will use the memory of 2002 to keep him focused as he shares the moments with his wife and baby daughter. Tomorrow brings the race's first rest day, and it will be a welcome change from 11 straight days of racing. The caravan rolls out to the village of Arco and along the coastline, while Flavio monitors the team for what will likely be a fast day out on the highway. At the midway point in the race, Leonardo drops back to the support car to load up on drinks for his squad. The riders select the drink of their choice. The peloton is flying now and all of the sprinters remaining in the race are accounted for with the exception of Robbie McEwen and Mario Cipollini. Giovanni Lombardi leads into the final corner with Bernati clinging to his back wheel. Casper goes to the far right but Pataki is too strong and takes the win even after being involved in a crash the day before. Pataki fights off the media as he is still in a great deal of pain from his crash in the time trial. The staff wraps up the day and the riders are anxious to get back to the hotel and get cleaned up for a well-deserved day of rest. The directors will use the free time for formulating their strategy for the remaining five days of racing, which will include two days in the highest mountains, as well as the final time trial into Milan. The Italian sun rises and smiles on the Saeco team for a well-deserved day of rest. The team is allowed to linger at breakfast for a little longer. Rest day follows a pattern. To relax is needed in an event such as this, but too much, and the riders risk not being able to return to their peak when the race resumes again tomorrow. Although the racing stops on the rest days, the riding does not. Each rider still spends a few hours in the saddle in order to keep his body from totally shutting down. The Saeco team, minus Simone, who remains inside to sleep, heads out for a ride with Francesco Moser. They're going to attend the christening of a local cycling museum in Castellania, the birthplace of cycling's great legend, Fausto Coppi. Yeah. 
even top professional riders of the 21st century can marvel at Francesca Moser's World Hour record breaking machine from 1984. Fausto Coppi, the Campionissimo, he remained loyal to Bianchi throughout a career that even these riders can still only dream of. After the christening, the team returned to the hotel. It was then that Simone appeared, ready now to go on a ride. As soon as he took off, several local men see their hero ride past and chase him down, excited to cheer on the Maglia Rosa as it rides through their backyards. And then, after some time into the ride, as the pressure of the race receded with each passing mile, he comfortably spun in his small chainring at 60 kilometers an hour without the slightest hint of effort. It was apparent that Simone needed the time alone on the bike, away from the race and the other riders to collect his thoughts, to go inside himself and focus on the crucial days ahead, to mentally prepare and to plan for the defense of his jersey and to imagine final victory in Milan. Out on these empty farm roads, crisscrossing the beautiful Italian landscape, the champion was every bit the young boy who had long ago discovered an innocent passion for the bike, whose basic pure love for the sport was at the heart of every pedal stroke. Spider bike. On certain days, such as a rest day, the top riders have to endure a press conference. It's a chance for the hundreds of press following the race to interrogate the race's leaders. And even when the race is not happening, there are still pages of newspapers which must be filled, especially in Europe. Lo zoncolan, papiago e la cronometro le conto tutte. Per me, per personalmente, sono già quattro vittorie. La cosa più bella sicuramente Faenza perché non me l'aspettavo. Ma c'è solo un giorno dove si può fare l'impresa, poi le altre sono tappe abbastanza delineate. La tappa di dove scaliamo Fausto Coppi e, e San Pere. In realtà un giro l'ho vinto e ne sono molto contento. Se il primo, era, se il primo giro per me era un sogno, questo, questo è una sfida, forse con gli altri, forse con me stesso, però è una sfida. Oppure sei tranquillo per affrontare tutto lo stesso? È solo un po' una questione di vedere come interpretarle, ma è appunto per questo. Io parto in vantaggio, dovranno essere gli altri che interpretano. No, non penso al doping, penso ai problemi che possono essere di tutte le nature, insomma. Perché il giro si vince in 20 giorni ma lo perdi in due chilometri, e capisci che non è tanto una questione di forza, è proprio una questione legata alla testa. Qual è la vostra Italia? Eh, arrivare a Milano, arrivare a Milano in maglia rosa. Bene, vi ringrazio. Grazie. Grazie. The teams take part in their usual ritual of signing in before making their way to the sponsorship area. Out on the course, riders put their friendships aside, but off the bike, they share a common bond, the love of racing and also to provide for their families. Many of these pros come from the same regions they will race over and they've known each other since the time they were junior cyclists. Simone takes a few moments to meet a group of children that have come to see their heroes. Like Simone, some of these youngsters might find themselves wanting to try a career as a professional cyclist. Today's short stage with a few rolling hills will give the riders a chance to get themselves up to speed after the rest day. It's about 90 degrees Fahrenheit in Asti today as the fans and support staff await the finish of the stage. The peloton dashes into the final kilometre and Pataki is again looking for a win. Giovanni Lombardi is back again with the familiar silhouette of Jimmy Casper close behind. Pataki is third wheel and waiting for the right time to go. 
Marco Velo has the uncertain honor of being the last lead out man for Pataki, who's looking for his sixth win. Velo stays on the rivet at the front, then comes Pataki, Lombardi, Casper. Inside the final 500 meters, and another move is coming from the right side. Pataki's teammate starts to celebrate with the conclusion that has come oh so familiar. Pataki gets it, his sixth stage win in this year's Giro d'Italia. Federico will make sure all of the riders will drink lots of fluids as it's very humid. On a day like this, the riders want to get to the team bus and get out of the hot sun. Federico gives directions to the bus and then will make his own way back to the podium area to look for one Gilberto Simoni. Some of the area's residents had the best seat in the house. The Giro has been a dream come true for Pataki and he has truly earned the respect of the peloton. Simone gets his seventh consecutive pink jersey and he maintains his lead for another day. It's a beautiful day in St. Divo Caforte and after 17 days of racing, the team is starting to feel the effects of being in the leader's jersey for over half of the race. Simone is not the only one to carry the pressure. The team shares the responsibility equally among all of its riders and staff. Gilberto has no fewer than three different bikes to choose from depending on the day's stage. In the mountains, he chooses his polished extra light bike for its weight savings and increased agility when out of the saddle. On the flat, he will choose to ride the specially painted spider bike. It's a slightly heavier machine, but rides incredibly well on the faster days across the countryside. Some of the staff wishes Simone good luck as they receive word that there is considerable snow on top of one of the mountain passes. Stage 18 is underway and the staff makes their way up the mountain towards the finish. After three brutal mountain peaks and 174 kilometers, the climbers will again find themselves with a mountain top finish that will certainly play a part in the overall classification. The small village of Valavareta is the perfect setting for a stage end. Its quaint exterior with creeks and lush green fields make it possible to accommodate large crowds. Federico takes responsibility for the riders at the finish while the Soigneurs wait a few kilometers back down the mountain. The team trucks are not allowed up the stage finish today due to the narrow roads and the steep gradients. Every team's helpers lie in wait for the riders as they monitor the race from the radios and televisions. The peloton has ridden out of the warm weather and up into what was a hailstorm earlier in the day. The higher they climb, the more the temperature drops. Before the top, it will look like we are watching a race in January, not May. The lead group is riding very well considering the conditions. Simone is setting the tempo and looking extremely comfortable. Simone increases the pace. Dario Frigo is the only one in the group of four that can stay with him. Tochnig and Specialetti are losing ground. Simone and Frigo are starting to pull away. Specialetti will stay back with Tochnik in the hope that Tochnik might take him back up to his teammate. The chasers come over the top. There is only one climb remaining. They quickly put on their rain jackets and prepare for the precarious descent. There's a crash. It involves Stefano Garcelli and Marco Pantani. They were trying to make up time, but these slippery roads and their aggressiveness have gotten the best of them. Garcelli isn't hurt too badly. Marco doesn't move quite so quickly and looks as if he might not be able to continue. Simone and Frigo are now opening up the gap and looking like they won't be caught before reaching the summit. Simone looks very cool as Frigo looks to be feeling the effects now of Simone's pace, the altitude and the weather. Down the mountain, Yaroslav Popovich is trying to pull the two leaders back, no doubt having heard by now of Godzelli's crash. The young rider can see for the first time an eventual podium place in Milan. Inside 10 kilometers, the leaders remove their helmets and hand them off to their support vehicles. Godzelli has come back and seems to have found his rhythm as his teammate will try and bring him back to the leaders. But the damage is done. Simone has agreed to take second as Frigo has done a line share of the work today. With Pataki's extraordinary Giro, this win helps the Fasa Bortolo team grab the headlines for another day and makes for a very happy sponsor. Frigo comes around Simone 
and will have his first stage win of this race. It will also move him up in the overall classification. Claudio Corti rounds up his team so he can congratulate them on a great performance but has lost a few of his riders to the time cut too as Pieri and Saki will not be allowed to start tomorrow. No fewer than 30 riders will be eliminated on this most cruel of stages. In life you always have to suffer, in all the things that you do, because if you want to do it at 100%, the suffering is always there, in all the work, not only in cyclism. What comes after a, 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 a sacrifice, a, a, a achievement of a goal with all the various sacrifices? In the great fatigue, you think only about a fare al massimo il tuo lavoro sai che devi appunto il tuo capitano eh, conta su di te conta che lo porti nelle migliori posizioni magari a puntare una salita oppure a fare una volata io quando ho uno scopo che so che il direttore sportivo mi chiede di fare quel determinato lavoro cerco di dare il massimo per poterlo fare Simone feels for his teammates and thanks them for all of their sacrifices. He assures them that their efforts will not be for nothing. Simone's lead is now seven minutes and eight seconds ahead of Garzelli. Simone makes his way to an open area where he will be flown by helicopter back down the mountain and back to the hotel. Driving back down could take hours and the team doesn't want to take the chance of altering his recovery. One of the many perks of being the race leader. Simone is proving to be a great champion, as well as a darling of the Tifosi, always greeting the fans and happy to sign autographs. Stage 19, a rolling 239 kilometers from Canelli to Famazza, finishes with a 1,675 meter climb to the summit of the Cascata del Torse. This incredible mountain is known for its waterfalls, which surely will be the last opportunity for the top riders to try and put Simone into difficulty. With the peloton looking at about 15 kilometers to go, the tempo is high and all of the favorites are at the front looking for a chance to attack. Godzelli seems to have recovered from yesterday's crash and he's sitting at the front right behind his teammate Steve Zampieri. Zampieri is setting an impressive pace at the start of the climb. Simone takes over the pacemaking with a few of his teammates in tow. The attack start to go as the ever vigilant Marco Pantani goes up the road himself. No one expected Marco to have started today after yesterday's crash, and that included his former teammate Stefano Garzelli. The organizers were in disbelief when he had gone on to finish the stage and then sign in at the village start this morning. Pantani seems to be getting better as this race progresses and is sitting in 14th place overall. The chase group is in pieces and fighting to stay in sight of the leader and the attacks just keep coming. Marco goes again, Simone leads the chase as the group is now down to 13. The constant attacks are having an effect on the group. And another attack comes, this time it's Pelazzotti and he looks to be getting a gap very quickly. Simone goes as well and is the only one who can counter the young Italian's attack. Simone catches Pelazzotti and flies right by him. He's used chasing Pelazzotti as an excuse to attack. Frigo is suffering, as is the rest of the group. Godzelli has no answer for Simone's acceleration. Pelazzotti claws his way back and tries to work with Simone. The two leaders are pulling away from the group and have about a 10 second gap. Simone decides to go it alone. He wants another stage win to prove to the racing world that he is a true champion and one of the great climbers of the sport. Not one rider has been able to match Simone's ability in this three-week race. The faces of the chase group tell the story. For Simone, this is his redemption and will help him make what happened in 2002 become a distant memory.
After over six hours in the saddle, Simone takes a big sigh of relief as he has only two more days before the race reaches Milan. Dario Pieri waits at the finish to show support for his fellow teammates as the other riders come in and have lost even more time to Simone. One by one, the rest of Team Seiko rolls in after receiving word over the race radio that the leader has claimed another victory. Over these past few weeks, this team has truly shown the importance of teamwork and selflessness. These goals cannot be left on the shoulders of just one man. It takes a team that is willing to sacrifice everything and come together as one to truly ensure that victory is possible. Stage 20, the day before the final time trial, Archetti and Tullio scramble to secretly build a special time trial bike for Simone. They hope to keep the bike under wraps until the start of tomorrow's stage. The frame was rushed to a local painter just days before. There's a lot of work still to be done. After assembling the bike, they must apply all of Simone's personal specifications so as to avoid any fine tuning on the day of the event. It is not surprising that the little things are very important to the staff. The stage today is only 133 kilometers and goes from Canobio to Cantu. It will be relatively flat and the team will relish in the fact that they no longer have to retain their offensive posture. This will be the final stage in this year's Giro that the team will ride together. Tomorrow's time trial into the center of Milan will remain one man against the clock. The team bus stops about 10 kilometers from the start as Simone has been asked to do a live radio interview from a limousine which will take the race leader the remainder of the way to the start. Simone finishes his interview and rejoins his team. This race will not be won until the line is finally crossed in front of the Domo in Milan. Massimiliano asks Simone if there are any concerns he might have about the day. No, io penso che allora della storia dell'anno scorso è rimasto qualcosa dentro di lui. È rimasto e penso che l'altro ieri, la tappa dell'altro ieri su al, le cascate del Toce, lui abbia, abbia vinto con dentro quel poco di rabbia che gli era rimasto dell'anno scorso. Penso che l'anno scorso sia stata una cosa eh, non valutata bene. Lui doveva, probabilmente questo doveva essere il suo terzo giro vinto. Invece siamo a due e questo lo rammarica un po'. E anche se non ci pensa più di tanto, ogni tanto viene fuori la, la, la rabbia all'interno di se stesso. E penso che comunque anche gran parte dei, dei risultati che ha dato quest'anno lui al Giro d'Italia siano anche merito di quella disavventura insomma, che lui ha, ha avuto che io ritengo comunque un'ingiustizia, una cosa non giusta. Poi è, è stata anche comunque è, risolta nel migliore dei modi, Gilberto non ha avuto neanche un giorno di squalifica, il che vuol dire che non c'era da mandarlo a casa, è, passato è passato insomma. Claudio tells all of his directors to be on the toes and that this race is not yet over. The staff and the riders prepare to spend the next three hours in the saddle. Simone gets well wishes and continued support as the team mount their steeds and roll off towards the start area. With 10 kilometers to go, a break of four riders, including Marco Velo, Eddie Mazzolini, Giovanni Lombardi, are one minute 30 up on the peloton. Mazzolini attacks and wants to go it alone, but he's not a match for Lombardi if it comes down to a sprint finish and he knows it. Mazzolini has a gap and he might just be able to hold it to the finish. Simone is looking very comfortable and not concerned with the breakaway. With slightly over four kilometers to go, Lombardi goes again to try and get on the wheel of Mazzolini. Lombardi seems to have recovered and is pulling Mazzolini back at an alarming rate. The other two are coming up as well. All four could come back together inside the last kilometer. 
The lead group starts to look at one another and gets set for a sprint finish. The peloton is breathing down their necks now and trying to spoil their chances. Velo is on the front as he continues to watch the other three. He then decides to go. Velo wants the stage, but Lombardi is the best sprinter in the group. And with Cipollini out, he will now have the chance for a stage win. Lombardi takes the win. Mazzolini gets second and Figuras is third. The group containing Simone comes in just over a minute back and there is no change in the overall classification as Team Seiko succeeds in protecting their leader. The riders will race again tomorrow but they don't have the weight now of protecting the race leader. Simone will be the only one that will have to remain focused at least until after the race reaches Milan. After that, Simone will have time to celebrate with his team, friends and family. It will be his second Giro title and he will want to share it with everyone. On the final day of June in Idroscalo, Tullio and the rest of the staff are hard at work preparing for what will be the final day in the 2003 Giro d'Italia. The staff is tired and will look forward now to a little time off to spend with their families before they resume their busy race calendar. Bicycles are reassembled and lined up for the riders and star positions are posted. Some of the riders will relax till it's time for them to go out and warm up. Damiani Cunego will be one of the first to go. As a young rider in his first Giro, he will still be trying to improve on his overall classification. Essendo uno scalatore che ha dei delle buone dote di recupero praticamente sono portato per, per i grandi giri ecco quest'anno ne ho avuto la conferma partecipando al Giro d'Italia che eh, soprattutto nella seconda e nella terza settimana quando gli altri cominciano a calare io comincio a ingranare bene, no? a cominciare a andare bene quindi per il futuro penso che una corsa che mi si addice potrebbe essere il Giro d'Italia ma mi piacerebbe molto anche il Tour de France eh. però questo chiaramente lo dico e lo penso e basta Sicuramente nei prossimi anni con la maturazione fisica così si potrebbe anche puntare. Penso che il mio futuro, se tutto andrà bene, di essere lì, dai, di essere un protagonista, speriamo almeno. Il mio ruolo nella SECO è il cosiddetto gregario, perché io non sono, non mi vergogno a dirlo, non sono capace a vincere le corse. Però posso essere sicuramente in qualche momento importante a far vincere i capitani della SECO. Io ammiro molte persone qua perché sicuramente fare il ciclista professionista è molto duro come altri sport a livello professionistico, però è... sia chi vince e sia chi aiuta a vincere come in questo caso io o altri corridori, secondo me è molto importante e non tutte le persone penso che, le pos che lo possono fare il ciclista. Dunque sono una persona disponibile con tutti, penso che i miei compagni mi rispettano, i giovani in questa squadra, parlo di Cunico, di Bertagnoli, di Sabagliascolas e tantissimi altri ragazzi, fanno molto affidamento su di me perché insomma ho una certa esperienza su un po' tutti i territori, cioè corsi in Belgio, corsi in Italia, corsi in Francia. E da quando ho avuto questo cambio di vita, intendo familiare, sono molto più socievole. Prima ero più nervoso, più teso, ero sempre un po' più irascibile nei loro confronti, anche di tutta la squadra, anche del personale. E mi sono reso conto, andavo sempre dopo a chiedere scusa, però adesso son, cioè, penso di, mi sento anche di essere cambiato, sono molto più aperto e in corsa i miei compagni, anche i miei, i miei capitani mi cercano e hanno fiducia in me e io voglio ripagarli col massimo impegno per loro. Simone arrives after having a look at the course layout. It is completely flat and nine kilometers shorter than the stage 15 time trial. Simone's spirits are of course very high and he is starting to show the first signs of emotion in the three weeks of racing. Simone can now relax. It would be almost impossible for him to lose eight minutes in only 33 kilometers, but he still won't take any chances. <laughs> Ma la squadra del Giro, eh, insieme con Claudio, abbiamo lavorato molto per, per, per mettere insieme questa squadra e ci siamo trovati più di una volta proprio a, a parlarne a tavolino. Eh, la fortuna era quella di avere sicuramente un capitano molto forte 
che ha avuto la, la, la forza di motivare molto anche quelli che erano i suoi, i suoi gregari. Il fatto di azzardare un po' magari su Bertagnoli e Cunego era che Bertagnoli l'anno scorso sicuramente ha, ha dato modo di pensare che era uno dei, dei più forti neoprofessionisti che sono passati pur non facendo grandi risultati, però essendo sempre al momento giusto nel posto giusto. Perciò questo dava la, la certezza praticamente che ci fosse anche il Giro d'Italia. E Saba lo conosciamo tutti anche se al giro non, è, non ha reso come, come pensavamo però sicuramente era uno che ha dimostrato prima del giro di essere forte e Cunego secondo il mio punto di vista valeva la pena di rischiare perché sapevo che anche se non fosse andato benissimo all'inizio del giro è uno che eh, ha un recupero eccezionale e, e poi valeva la pena di rischiare perché è un ragazzo che ci crediamo moltissimo anche per il patrimonio del ciclismo italiano Bertiglioli is next to warm up He will act as the time marker for Gilberto, who starts later in the day. Simone makes his way to get in some warm-up time, but as always, will also make time for the fans. A couple of other familiar faces on the Seiko squad show up to congratulate their teammates in their victory. Merco Celestino and Ivan Caranta did not make this year's Giro squad, as Celestino is better suited to the one-day races, while Caranta was replaced just days before the start of the Giro. His form was not good enough for the Grand Tour. Simone starts his warm-up. The mechanics will be looking at his position and making any final adjustments, as there was no time to pre-ride the bike after it was built. Simone continues to bring his legs up to speed, some of his close arrivals head towards the start zone. Godzelli is off and he's not thinking about Simone but rather Popovic as he lies only two seconds behind. Simone is off, he will give everything he has. He wants to get through the stage without any problems. He won't take any unnecessary chances. He will try and maintain his lead right into Milan and show the fans that he really is the best man in this year's Giro d'Italia. Gozzelli is riding like a man with a lot to lose. Simone is riding well and is holding on to his lead. Popovic is looking like he could move into second with this ride. Simone is inside the final 10 kilometers and rides very comfortably. Popovic is averaging exactly the same speed as Godzelli. It's going to be close. Simone is riding this last day to his teammates. He knows that without their dedication, he wouldn't be wearing the pink jersey in Milan. Popovic has pulled back a single second on Godzelli. Godzelli is riding to keep his second place position. The second and third places are matching each other, pedal stroke for pedal stroke. Popovic is coming to the line and the 23-year-old wants to take second away from Garzelli. Garzelli rounds the final corner. Simone is inside the final kilometer. The crowd is going crazy and they know it is now just a race for second place. Garzelli is not giving up. He's a true competitor. He won't go down without a fight. But Stefano Gartelli is going to hold on to his advantage. Simone flies through the streets of Milan. As every meter goes by, the reality of victory starts to set in as some of the riders have not experienced a win of this magnitude. Simone is down to the final few corners. Simone can see the end and has the sweet taste of victory on his lips. He rounds the final corner and the entire city of Milan is on its feet. They welcome the two-time Giro d'Italia winner to the final meters of these cobblestone roads. Simone now comes across the line and is swarmed by his entire team and staff as well as the media. Their moment has arrived. Team Saeco has delivered sweet victory to the people of Italy and Simone has proven once again that he is a true champion.
He has beaten all of his rivals on all levels and erased the judgment from everyone who has doubted him. The champion is lifted on the shoulders of his teammates and congratulated by all. The square is filled with tens of thousands of Tafosi, all sharing in the celebration. All too often is victory attributed to the class and effort of one rider. The honor rolls of cycling read with singular names and years of victory belying the suffering and sacrifice that make this sport one of the most beautiful and popular in the world. Underneath the images of victory and suffering, these athletes are sons, husbands, fathers and friends that give much more than their bodies to this most glorious of sports. They've also given their heart. Ci vuole, soprattutto su, su sport come il nostro, dove c'è molto impegno, ci vogliono molto per, molte persone e che ti capiscano e che ti vogliono anche bene. Penso che in questa squadra c'è di tutto, da, dal più bizzarro al più tranquillo, al più deciso, al più tenace, al più grintoso. Guardando indietro, rivivendo momenti del giro, capisco che la cosa speciale di questa squadra è che Ognuno ha dato il massimo giorno per giorno e la fortuna è che ogni giorno c'era qualcosa in più, qualcuno che magari doveva recuperare, qualcun altro che invece aveva qualcosa da spendere. Con, con questa squadra mi sarebbe piaciuto cominciare, cominciare la mia carriera professionistica se avessi avuto una squadra come questa penso che non avrei dovuto tribulare come soffrire come ho sofferto i primi anni avrei trovato subito un ambiente giusto professionale ma soprattutto con tanta voglia di fare ciclismo di farlo bene è una fortuna che ho trovato dopo diversi anni ma spero di poter continuare ancora in questa squadra Nine men ride off to battle on steeds of space age composites supported by squires who care for body and armor guided by generals who rode the battlefield. Outnumbered 20 to 1, they hurl themselves into the mouth of the man-eating beast called a peloton to spar for as long as eight hours a day, week after week. What drives a man to delve to the darkest depths of pain? To brave the elements of an open-air arena with a playing field of asphalt and stone? What pushes him to give all he has so that another man may triumph from his efforts? What redemption lies on the far side of suffering? Triumph waits at the end of the road for the man who has chosen his battle wisely. But it is glory that comes to the man who climbs from his machine and ascends the podium to take his place among the gods of sport. The 2003 edition of the Giro d'Italia saw one man's defining moment become a team's, and a team's become a nation's.